having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. I just want to share some information about Scooter and where the name of Scotland comes from. So, just want to, let's have a look. Scooter is a Latin place name derived from Scoti, a Latin name for Gaelic, and I apologise if I say these, some of these names wrong. Uh, first attested in the third, late 3rd third century. From the 9th century, its meaning gradually shifted so that it came to mean of the 5th of 4th, the Kingdom of the Middle Ages, and had become the fixed Latin term for what in English is called Scotland. The Romans were Gota around 500 AD. Okay. So Ireland and Scotland were basically referred to as the same. Apologize if I get some of this wrong. Still learning. Okay, the etymology and der derivations. The name of Scotland is derived from the Latin Scota. The tribe named Scota applied to all Gaels. The word Scoti was first used by the Romans. It is found in Latin texts from the 4th century describing an Irish group which raided the Roman Britain. It came to be applied to Gaelis. It is not to believe that any Gaelic group called themselves Scoti or Scot. Going back as far as the 9th century, for example, in the glossary of Cormac, I can't even say that, I apologise, he was an Irish bishop and king of Munster from 902 until his death at the Ballad of Bellagamon. Was... Omen derives it from Scot, meaning someone cut off. He believed it to refer to the bands of the outcast Gaelic raiders, suggesting that the Scots were the, to the Gaels what Vikings were to the Norse. The 19th cent century author can't even say that right, I apologise, of Glasgow, proposed that Scotty was derived from Gaelic, can't even say these words, so, I think it's Sagoth, Swarm, plus the deviation. This proposal to date has not been met with any response in mainstream place studies. Pope Leo X, 1513 to 1520. The use of the name Scota be confined to referring to the land that is for Scotland are based on the Scota route, such as Shotland, French is Ecosse, Dutch, Chicosto, uh, Adele usage. Scota translate to the land of the Scots in a far way of saying land of the Gales compared to Angel and Angela, Francia and Francia, Romani and Romania, etc. It was originally used as an island. For example, the Alderman's Life of Columbia and where Isidore of Seville in 580 Comedia writes ethnic. This is how it use, this is how it is used, for instance, by King Robert I of Scotland, Robert the Bruce, and Domhnall Arneil during the Scottish Wars of Independence called Scotia Major, Greater Scotia, and Scotland, Scotia Minor, Lesser Scotia. It was used mostly for the Kingdom of Elba or Scotland, and its designation. As the translation of Elba, Scotter could mean both the whole kingdom belonging to the King of Scotland or to Scotland north of the fourth. Pope Leo X of the Roman Catholic Scotland exclusive rights over the word, and this led to Anglo Scottish takeovers of the continent. Gee, this word I just can't say it, sorry. I'm trying to highlight it so it brings up what it says. In Irish sources, in Geoffrey Keating's Foros Vista, oh, can't even butcher that, Ireland's ninth appellation named it Scota, likewise based from the sons of Miles Zeus, of whom's mother's name, Scota, who was the daughter of Naked Bimo, one. He was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh of the last native dynasty in Europe, uh, Egypt, the XXXTH, King of Egypt. Or perhaps the Middle Irish language, synthetic history, this word. She was the daughter of Pharaoh Nicho II of Egypt. Other sources, Nero of Egypt and his wife Snaves, that is, Milestress, and the mother of Eber, Don, and Emron. Mill had given Nephrohotop military aid against ancient Ethiopia and was given Scota in marriage as a reward for his service. Writing in 15. 71. Edmund Campton named the pharaoh Emmanuel 
Amenophis. Keating named him Chronisus. This one's an ancient Egyptian name. It's Greek version. I am so sorry for saying these wrong. In geography, the term is also used for the following. The Canadian province of Nova Scotia, New Scotland. The village of Scotia in New York State. The Scotia Glen High School in New York State, named after Scotia, Scottish Senator. The Scotia Sea between Antarctica and South America. Scotia Plate, a tectonic plate located to the south of South America. The term is also used for the following purposes. To describe a piece of wood, millwork, that is as a base of columns, main stair construction. Scotia Bank, a train name for the Bank of Nova Scotia. Rarely as a feminine's first name. Pride Scota, Scotland's national LGBT pride festival involving marching community-based festivals held in June. Pharaoh and when the wars happened, she says a map of the Roman divisions of Ireland, Scotland and Scota was shown in uh, 1654, illustrating the later use of Scotia, Scotland and Hibernia. See how it looks. Beautiful old map. Where it's drawn. Here's grave. Scotia's grave. I don't know, but sorry. It's an area just south of Tarley in County Kerry, beside the Fingal's Rivulet in here. It marks what is reputed to be the grave of Scotia, a daughter of an Egyptian pharaoh named as Freil. The traditional name of the location is Glen Scotland, the Vale of the Little Fossum. Scotland is a t of Scott. The T may be aspirated to. I can't say this. I apologise. Scotland's name comes from the Irish language and refers to the Irish colonists that brought Gaelic culture there. Scota, per the ethnogenesis mythology, other names the Irish use them. The name Scota like me means blossom. Scot or Scoth meaning blossom, and Scotton or Scothin meaning we blossom. According to several references, mythology. Scota was the wife of former Marcus and mother of six sons. She was killed in the legendary this one on the nearby Slimish Mountains. Scota is said to have come to Ireland in 1700 BC to avenge the death of her husband, the king, who had been wounded in previous ambush in South. So it's just really interesting, you know, daughter of an Egyptian pharaoh. So I was just looking at um, Freemasonry, a lot of you know, it goes to the Scottish and the Scottish Rite and everything like this. Uh, this was just mentioned on Scotus Grave, so I can't even say these names butchered. Meaning the folk of the god of Stendu, owned by the early name of this tribe of the gods. Uh, the constituted a pantheon whose attributes appeared in a number of forms throughout the Celtic world. In other world, but well. They are associated with ancient Passage tombs such as the seen as portals to the other world. It's huge. Wow. The rivals are the Formarians or the Formai, destructive powers of nature, and the whole Tartu defeat in the Battle of Magturin. Each member of has associates with a particular feature of life or nature. But many appear to have more than one association. Many have by names. People they often depicted the as kings, queens, heroes of the distant past who had supernatural powers. Other times, they were explained as fallen angels who were neither bad, showing them to be immortal. Prominent members of the god, the Morrogan, Le, Nuda, Angbridge, Bridget, Bridge, Menon, a god of the sea, this guy, a god of healing, Rubnai, a god of metal smithing, and one of these three gods of craftsmen. They have parallels in the pantheons of the adult Celtic peoples. For example, Lu is congruent with the pan-Celtic god Lugus, Nana with the British god Nordens, and Bridge with Bridgetina, Turin with Turanus, Ogma with Ogmosis. I am so sorry for saying these wrong. Butcher, I'm sorry. The old Irish Toth. Plural Totha means people, tribe, nation. De is the genitive case of Dai, Daya, and depending on context can mean God, gods, goddess, and more broadly, supernatural being, object of worship. In the earliest writings, the mythical race are referred to as the... However, Irish monks also began using the term to refer to the Israelites with the meaning people of God. 
apparently to avoid confusion with the Israelites. Writers began to prefer to refer to the mythical race, the old Irish pronunciation, oh, and the Mar- oh, I couldn't even say that. I apologize. So there's a poem written about it. Dan is generally believed to be a genitive of a female name, which is a nominative case, it is not attested. It has been reconstructed as Danu, of which Anu, genitive NN, may be an observed form. Anu is called Mother of the Irish Gods. And we've had that one before too, haven't we? Uh, Mother Gods by Cormac Mac. He was the king of Munster from 902 until his death at the Bellow. This may be linked to Welsh mythical figure Don, Hindu mythical mythology, and also also has a goddess called Danu, which may be an Indo-European parallel. However, this reconstruction is not universally accepted. It has also been suggested that Danan is the compilation of Dan's skill craft and the goddess named Anan. The name also found as Donan and Domain, which may point to the origin being pro Celtic Don meaning Earth, compared to the Irish word for Earth Domain, Domain. This may be a link with the mythical and the British Domino. Okay, so legend. This people were descended from here. Nimed or Nimeth is the character of medieval Irish legend. According to Libro Gabriel, he was the leader of a third group of people settled in Ireland. Hmm. So he, leader of previous wave of inhabitants of the island that came from four cities to the north of the island. I don't want to butcher these. Where they are taught their skills and science, including architecture, the arts, magic, including necromancy. According to this guy, they came to Ireland in dark clouds and landed on the mountains of the coming rain in here. Ooh, very interesting. Otherwise, darkness over the sun for three days and three nights. They immediately burnt the ships so that they should not think of retreating to them. And the smoke and the mist they came from the vessels filled with the neighboring land and air. Therefore it was convinced in clouds of mist. A palm from the sky saves of their arrival. It is God who suffered them, though he restrained them. They landed with horror, with a lofty deed, up in their cloud of a mighty compact of spectres upon the mountainous rock. Without distinction to discerning island, without ships a ruthless quirk, course. The truth was not known beneath the sky of our stars, and whether they were heaven or of earth. According to Turan, yeah, whose origin the learned do not know, but it seems likely to them that they came from their intelligence and for the excellence of their knowledge. Led by King Nuda, they fought the first battle of the March native fry blog, who inhabited Ireland. The battle, Nuda lost her arm to their champion, Sigrid. Since Nader was no longer unblenished, he could not continue as king and was replaced by a from Bruce, who turned out to be a tyrant. The physician replaced Nuda's arm with a working silver one. Wow. Placed his arm. Dissatisfied with the replacement, so he recited the spell which caused the flesh to grow over the silver prosthesis and over the course of nine days and nights. However, he slew his own son because of Nita's rest- restoration as leader, his family, his father, assistance from he, uh, the king of Fromans. I apologize for saying this wrong. Then he had a second battle. He was killed by the Fromanian king. Poisonous eye, a group of supernatural beings, described as a giant with a large eye that wreaks destruction when opened. And he but was killed by it's really interesting that, you know, it's sort of everything all these groups started in this area. Okay, so this is another name 
for it. It's classic Latin name, geographical accounts during his exploration of the northwest Europe in 320 BC. So this Greek geographer made a voyage in 325 BC called the island. This in his so yeah, I'll leave the links in the description. Just really, really uh, interesting. So the Royal Exchange in Dublin was built in 1769 to 79. Okay, I was just reading about one of these supernatural, you know. Heroes, they call them, that fought and beat a king. A group of malevolent supernatural beings is often described as a giant with a large eye that wreaks destruction when open. Balor takes part in the Battle of... And it's probably known for the tale in which he killed his grandson. And he has been interpreted as a personification of the scorching sun and has also been likened to figures from other mythologies, such as the Welsh Yabashan and the Greek Cyclops. It sounds like a cyclops to me. Excuse me. So, I'll leave the link in the description for you. It's just really, really interesting. Um, yeah, they're saying here it took the strength of four warriors to lift the eyelid by grabbing the ring handle attached to it. So, four people to lift up the eyelid, it's just, yeah, so, dating from the 12th century, so he survived the loss of his eye, I've heard this story, it's one where he has an island, and he locks his daughter up, yeah, in a tower to keep her from becoming pregnant. He goes across the sea, steals the magical cow of abundance belonging to another bloke. He learns he can only get the cow back when he's dead. So with the help of his female familiar spirit, Enterprise enters the tower, finds her and pregnant. Yeah, I'll leave the link in the description for you. So I'm getting a bit distracted as to what I was really wanting to show. So, um, just show you quickly the city hall and built 1769 to 1779. It's probably got a typical story of, you know, the same person who built it. Interesting, okay? More interesting. Ah, Sean Connolly. So here it is today. Beautiful building. Beautiful light there. Looks like there's someone sitting up the top there. <laughs> Here's another photo of it. 18th century view. Entrance of the towers burning. Oh, wow, interesting. And this is just one thing I, you know, been thinking about this king here. He was the first king of England from 924 to 939. And according to this poem, Masons came to the king for directions, and he, along with the nobility and landed gentry, crafted 15 rules to live by for every Mason. These 15 points are mentioned in the manuscript and considered as moral codes by which every Freemason must live. The manuscript has been dated to 1390 AD, proves that Freemasonry existed during medieval ages, and it's not a modern phenomenon as speculated by some of its detractors. The oldest lodge in the world has been Mary's Chapel, located at 19 Hill Street, Edinburgh, Scotland. It has been in operation since 1599 AD, and is certainly a lodge which must be paid attention to. The modern United Grand Lodge of England came into existence around 1770 meaning that Mary's Chapel was in existence a century before the Grand Lodge in England was established. Another important point which leads to mention in this article is that the Middle Eastern origins of Freemasonry has mentioned the myths about Freemasonry. Apparently this organization is known to have been born in the Middle East during medieval times or ancient times. So masonry is banned in the Middle East countries because it was considered an arm of Western colonies and empires which dominated its region through the 19th and 10th century. Indeed, the Middle Eastern symbols are omnipresent in various rites and rituals of where we must not overlook the fact that all aberrate religions also oriented in, originated in Middle East. So it's beyond question that there are some sort of Middle Eastern 
Um, there's also evidence which suggests that they may have something to do with the Crusades and orders established by them, such as the Knights Templar and the Knights Hospital. Um, there's other, many other uh, groups. It, there's one thing certainly is through Mason Rivers in existence in pre-Renaissance medieval Europe, and this is particularly true for England and Scotland. There was one individual who associated with Freemasonry. It's crystal clear, and there's no doubt he was cre closely linked with Masons during the reign of James. King James I in England during the late 16th and 17th century. He's known for three Masonic statues he created between 1598 and 1601. I, I actually feel it comes from uh, old Egyptian is, is where I feel it comes from. So, yeah. I know that the Rosicrucians joined the Masons in the, I think it was the 25th of June. 1725 in a tavern, so but I think it's more Egyptian and it goes back to Skota bringing over what she had. So I'll look into these other ones on another video. Just want to say wherever you are in the world, thanks for watching and you know sticking with me and in my journey. I appreciate everyone's thoughts and comments and feedback and um yeah, I've been quiet for a bit, just family stuff, but hope everyone's doing okay. So, wherever you are in the world, thanks for listening and watching, and hope you have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Raise your vibrations. Much love to you all.